Today Adobe just posted a new tool called Adobe Shadow and this is a really sweet uh, little application that lets you preview web pages on your devices uh, and have that navigation stay synchronized with what you're doing on your desktop so you would go to a website and your devices will go to that same website uh, that way you can look and see what your uh, design looks like on these mobile devices while you're kind of in that uh, responsive design phase and you're trying to uh, customize the design for different screen resolutions or different devices and on top of that it'll even let you do some debugging of the of the code and design within that mobile design. So I want to do a little quick video here to show you how to get up and running with it. Uh, Labs.adobe.com is where you can download it and, and Shadow's in beta right now so uh, you know it, it, it's there are some issues uh, with it um, that you might discover but um, it'll be on Labs.adobe.com for a little bit until they are ready to release it fully. Um, if I go to the Shadow link You'll see this is where I can follow the instructions to, to download it. It's a, it's a few steps in the process because the first thing you need to do is download the actual application um, for your Mac or for your, uh, your Windows uh, computer. And after you download it and run it, you'll see it's just kind of a, a, a generic app that just needs to be running in the background for everything to work. So I'm going to minimize uh, this uh, application and I have that running. Then you need to go to your uh, applicable app store, whether you're on iOS or Android. These are the only two platforms supported right now, um, but those cover you know a wide range of devices that are out there. You need to go to those app stores and download Adobe Shadow. So if I show you my devices here, I have an iPad and an Android phone. You'll see my Android phone is a little broken, but that's okay. Uh, it still works perfectly fine so I can download Shadow and I have already done that. Uh, you can see in the uh, or in the iOS app store that there's an iPad version and an and a, uh, uh, iPhone version so whatever your your iDevice is that will uh, that will be uh, what you need. Now I'm gonna get uh, these programs up and running here so I'll open the one on Android and I'll open the one on iOS and right now they're trying to connect to my computer, but in order to do this, I need to have uh, my browser plugin for Google Chrome. So I'm going to install this from the Chrome Web Store. Keep in mind this is only available for Google Chrome, so if you don't have Google Chrome, there's no time like the present to start working with it. You'll now see I get this little icon in the upper corner here. Uh, it is a plugin for Chrome, and it's looking for the different devices right now. Now if I go back to my webcam here, you'll see that both devices have detected my computer. Um, and I can choose that for each of them. And when I do, this is kind of hard to see on the phone here, but it pops up a code. And that code is what I need to type in here to essentially authorize the computer. So 326076. And I'll hit enter and uh, HTC Supersonic apparently is the name of that. That's nice and cool. I'm going to go back to my iPad. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click it and there's another code that pops up there. And I'll go back to my browser and enter that code as well. So now I've got both of my devices connected. You'll see the devices are showing that they're connected and, 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 and ready to go. And what I can now do from uh, the Adobe Shadow standpoint is start navigating um, and, and, and working with my uh, web design that I'm working on. So I'm going to close down a couple of tabs that I have open here. I've pulled up uh, uh, just a, a simple responsive design. This is actually a little navigation thing that was uh, just posted today uh, on one of the blogs that I follow. and. I just went to this web page. Well, this is the beautiful thing about Adobe Shadow. If I actually go back to my camera, you'll see that both of my devices are actually pulling up this page as well. So everything is synchronized right now. Um, if I switch back to the Adobe Labs website, you'll see the devices switch as well. Now I'm going to resize my browser a little bit here so I can have both my camera and my uh, 
uh, browser showing here so you can see all the all the different uh, devices and as again I click through these different tabs you'll see it is is going there and the important thing to note here is that it's not just sending images or or doing some kind of like emulation or something goofy it's it's, it's literally having the device um, browse it with its native web browser you'll even see in the Android phone that I'm getting a different kind of navigation at the top the navigation I have up here wants me to pull down to show the navigation um, versus on the iPad and on my uh, browser it's, it's showing some traditional navigation now let's go to a different page. This is a this is a blog here that has a whole bunch of uh, responsive um, web designs on it, and I'm going to scroll down to uh, this one that I like a lot um, is this Sparkbox. Now one thing I want to make note right now is that as I'm scrolling down the page, it's not making the websites on the devices scroll down as well. It, it's not trying to to synchronize your actual view. It's just getting you to the web page. So again, if I click a link and actually navigate to a page, the devices will follow that link. And again, depending on how fast your connection is, it might take a little bit to load up. You can see my phone uh, was a little bit behind, but as you look here, you know, right now I actually have my browser narrower than my iPad. So the, the navigation is actually different than you're seeing on the iPad because the iPad's actually wider right now. But I can scroll down and look at this design and see how it works. Um, I can also come to uh, my, my tablet and do the same thing. Scroll down and see how it looks. And the phone. Scroll and see how it looks. And this just makes it really easy for you to begin testing media queries and, and looking at your, your different content, how it appears on mobile devices. Um, another thing that is pretty cool about this is if you go to a website like we have a, a local our local NBC station is care11.com if I go to care11.com you'll see in the browser it's going to the website I'm getting the iPad version of it as well but notice my mobile phone actually is on a different page well this is actually redirecting to M dot care 11 dot com so on very on, on smaller phones and devices they actually are doing a server-side redirect pushing you to a whole nother website and I can preview that very easily here because I'm testing it actually on my phone so you can see with just a couple of minutes of setup this is instantly useful for uh, web designers and developers out there in the wild now one last thing I want to show you about this I'm gonna go back to my uh, uh, other design here. Actually, let me go back to the csparkbox.com. I use Google Chrome a ton, and one of my favorite features of Google Chrome from a web development standpoint is that I can right-click on an element and inspect it. And what this does is it opens up your your a kind of a DOM inspector that's looking through all the all the different code. And and as I'm mousing over these links, I can see like their size. And you can see that about link is 52 by 25. Um, if I click on it, I can actually see the CSS that's on you know that that is styling that. And and I can even edit that CSS. Now this isn't actually updating their CSS. It's just updating the the preview of it. But if I were to make the uh, well, the margin right here be 50 pixels, you'll see that really messes up the navigation, but I can play around and and tweak the CSS. And when it comes to mobile, this is something that would be incredibly helpful for being able to look at why is this thing moved over or why, what, what is the width of that element? Why, what's causing it to look the way it does? And this is another thing that is a part of the Adobe Shadow plugin. So if I go to Adobe Shadow here, and I want to maybe preview something on my on my uh, uh, HTC device here. You'll see that there's this little um, uh, icon here for remote inspection, and I can click that icon, and this is actually using um, uh, uh, this Weiner technology to be able to do the exact same thing that I can do in Google Chrome. So, for example, if I go to the Elements here, you'll see. I get this DOM inspector again, and I'm looking at the entire page right now. Um, if I begin expand, rolling over the different elements, you'll see it's actually highlighting on the phone. So I'm going to expand uh, this container here. I'm going to expand the header, 
and it's got some nav in it and I'm going to keep drilling into that and eventually I'll get to some of the links like the contact link or here's that unordered list and if I begin mousing over those you'll see I'm getting the exact same elements. I can click on this when this happens to be that about link and I can see all the CSS that's on that. And again, this is incredibly useful for anyone who is trying to debug design, different designs uh, that they're building for mobile devices. You simply just have to have your mobile devices here, get Adobe Shadow installed, and everything is going to be uh, uh, synchronized and, and able to be inspected through this, uh, this tool. It's very, very exciting. Now, just for the record, you can, you know, with this tool, you can go and look at all your authorized devices, and you can, uh, you know, deauthorize them if you want, if you don't want them to be connected anymore. You could simply turn off Adobe Shadow if you're just going to go, um, you know, read some blogs or just surf the web and you don't want all your devices constantly syncing to that same uh, that same website that you're going to so um, again really really cool tool I highly recommend you get started with it um, and uh, start playing around with it because as they add more features into it this is going to um, just make it more and more uh, convenient for web designers to be able to build mobile content